guys so one of my favorite things about history banding is how unique a thing it is everyone has their own approach to it some people do full historical dress creating garments in a historic way some people just incorporate aspects of different time periods into their outfit so i thought for today i would share with you guys a few of my favorite pieces now i'm fairly new to history bounding well i say fairly new so i almost gave up on history bounding at the beginning of the year and then i found that there's a whole community of people that do it i didn't know what it was didn't know i had a name it really renewed that fire in me so i don't have a ton of pieces yet but i thought today i would share with you some of my favorites from my wardrobe this outfit was actually one that was worn on my wedding day not by me i couldn't find my skirt which i'm a little disappointed in um it was my luncheon outfit and it was yellow and it was very similar but it was yellow um this one was worn by my maid of honor it's not super her style so she decided after a little while that she was gonna get rid of it and asked me if I wanted it. So that was really like the first time I ever started wearing a bustle consistently. This next part is a hot, hot mess. Like I'm warning you now. Um, it's the first bustle dress I ever made. While I was in college, I didn't have a desk or anything my first semester to put a sewing machine on. Um, so I would sit on the floor cross-legged and then run the pedal with my knee. I knew nothing about how bustles were constructed. The top, however, is a recent thing. Modeled after this painting right here. It's called Ribbons and Laces for Pretty Faces. And I don't remember the artist's name off the top of my head. Somebody is going to freak out at me for this one because I did a thing. I found this trench coat at a thrift shop and it was, it's like three sizes too big for me, maybe four. Like it was massive on me. And so um, I took it in a little bit here and there but I still never really wore it. So about a year and a half ago, I turned it into like a romper. Um, I didn't cut it at all. So I could, I could actually unpick all the seams that I put in it last year. When I took it in, I did cut off some stuff, unfortunately. However, when I turned it into a romper last year, I didn't cut anything. I just put like basting stitches in so if I wanted to turn it back into a trench coat theoretically I could however I've been wearing it as a romper and I prefer it that way and I know there are some people who are going to be very very angry that I did that with a vintage piece of clothing however it was a fight between I really like this item but it's just hanging in my closet and turning it into something that I'd actually wear and I decided clothing is made to be worn and it deserves to be worn and used for its purpose instead of just sitting in a closet so I turned it into something I would wear so this is the first bustle dress I made that I had like a vague idea of what I was doing I bought all this fabric when Hancock's was going out of business and my husband helped me pick out the fabrics and put them together. I was a little skeptical until I actually made the dress and I love it. As you can see, I'm very partial to the Victorian era, specifically the 1870-1890 look. I have lots of plans to add other garments to my wardrobe from differing time periods to give more variety and also show more of the aspects of historical dress that I love. So thanks for sticking with me this week and if you enjoyed yourself go ahead and subscribe and hopefully we'll see you next week.